Good morning, friends. Welcome to this service. It's another virtual service, as you know. Um, don't know when we will be able to get out of it, but um, perhaps next month or uh, surely by October, we should be able to go back to church again. But a very warm welcome to this uh, virtual service. Uh, I'm standing in for Numbulelo. She's not well. She's been booked off. And um, so we will remember her in prayer. <clears throat> Our call to worship is from Psalm 138, um, verses 1 to 4. I had it yet a minute ago, of course. There we are. Psalm 138, verses 1 to 4. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down towards your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. You made me bold and stout-hearted. May all the kings of the earth praise you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. Give thanks to God for that call to worship. Um, the notices, uh, you've got them on uh, WhatsApp or whatever, and uh, you can read it yourself in, in, in detail. I just want to wish all the people that are having birthdays this week a very happy birthday. And um, then I also want to just thank everybody who is uh, participating and giving to the church. The whole circuit is, in, is financially distressed. And uh, so we really appreciate that fact that Florida has been able to be up to date with all its assessments and um, have been able to meet every bill so far. So a real heartfelt thank you to everyone um, for that, for your participation and your sacrif sacrificial giving. And then we will remember the people in our prayer list in our intercessory prayers later on.
So let us turn to God in prayer. Come, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we lift our eyes to you this morning. We acknowledge that you are God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God, world without end. We thank you for the wonder of you as reflected in your creation. The stars speak of your glory, and we can only see a fraction of the stars that are out there. The trees clap their hands and rejoice because you made them. The birds and the flowers sing your praises. We look at the colors and we are amazed. We just stand in awe and wonder of you. And then we think that you, the almighty God, made us. Made us in your image. And when we have turned away from you, as we still so often do, in your compassion and your great wisdom, before the earth was made, you ordained that Jesus Christ, your son, will be born as one of us, will come to this earth and live our lives and die our death. Perfect and without blemish, he was sacrificed for our sins. And we thank you for that. Father God, when we look at your holiness, we look at ourselves and we see that we are small, we're insignificant, and most of all, we are a sinful people. But we are significant to you because you died for us. And we are here for a purpose. We're not here by accident. But we are a sinful people. We have gone our own ways. We are so selfish. We do not consider our fellow human beings. We cross over to the other side like the Levite did. Father, forgive us, forgive us all our sin. Not what we have done, what we have thought, what we have said, what we have done, how we replaced you in the center of our lives. But we turn again this morning to you. You are the author of all life, the sustainer, the creator, and the recreator. And we pray this morning that you will recreate us, creating us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Thank you, Father, that as we confess our sins, you are faithful and you forgive us our sins. So we thank you for that. We hear your word of grace. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your provision for us, how you guide us, how you help us, how you've helped us in this last week. Whatever trial and tribulation we have experienced, you were there with us. You carried us through it. We thank you for the multitude of blessings which you bestow upon us. The roof over our heads, the clothes that we wear, the food that we eat. Our families, our loved ones, our children and grandchildren, our parents and grandparents. All our family are scattered around the globe, but you are with them as you are with us today. And we thank you for them. We thank you for the technology that allows us to keep in touch with them. 
We can even see them and hear them. And we thank you for our church family of which we are a part. Again, we are all different, but we are united in our love for you. And we pray for our friends that are in other churches and other denominations, our colleagues that we work with. We lift them up to you and thank you for friendship. Thank you for how you've made us, that we are able to love and be loved. Thank you, Lord, for our eyes with which we can see, our ears with which we can hear, our mouths with which we can sing and talk and rejoice. Thank you for our hands, our feet. Thank you for every day that you've given us, for the sun that shines and the wind that blows. And as already we can see the beginning of spring and summer coming, we thank you that in the changing seasons, you are the constant. You don't change. You're always the same, always the loving God. So we thank you and worship you this morning. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, we have two uh, readings today. And again, I'm not going to read them. Um, you can read them in your own time. We have a reading from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 8, and Matthew 16, verses 13 to 20. So let's listen to what God is saying to you and to me this morning. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our God. Amen. Now Paul writes in the, to the church in Rome and also to the church at Florida, South Africa today. The message to us comes from our reading in Romans chapter 12. And there isn't one specific text that I've chosen, but there is one thought captured in the first eight verses of this chapter. Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do we agree with that? Do we understand that worship is not something that happens only in the church? To offer our bodies means to take our bodies and all the tasks that we have to do. To take the mundane, repetitive job that you do in the factory or at the office and offer it all to God. Real worship is the offering of everyday life to Him. To achieve this demands a radical change. We must not be conformed by the world, but be transformed from it. The change is not in our outward appearance, but our inward personality. What is this change to live a life dominated by the Spirit? of Christ. Paul says that this must happen by the renewing of our mind. When Christ becomes the center of life, then we can present real worship. Paul then compares the Christian church to our bodies. We all know that our bodies are complex machinery 
that worked well together. The members of our bodies neither argue with each other, nor envy each other, nor dispute about their relative importance. Each part of the body carries out its own function, however prominent or obscure that may be. Paul is reminding us how it should be in the church. In this passage lies important rules for life. Firstly, it urges us to know ourselves. We will not get far if we do not know what we can and what we cannot do. It requires an honest assessment of our capabilities. Secondly, it requires us to accept ourselves and to use the gifts God has given us. We do not envy someone else's gift nor do we regret that some other gift has not been given to us. Thirdly, Paul emphasizes that whatever gift we might have, it comes from God. It is not something that we could buy or attain by ourselves. I like reading and I would immerse myself in the book and with the characters that I meet. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I could never write a book. Fourthly, Paul says that we must all use our gifts and the motive must be not personal prestige, but the conviction that it is at one and the same time our duty and privilege to make our contribution to the common good. Now we've built up to uh, the crux. What are the gifts that Paul lists? But again, we are reminded that we have different gifts according to the grace given us. Prophecy. Now, this is not a word that we are very familiar with, but according to the dictionary, it is a message of divine truth revealing God's will. Only rarely in the New Testament does prophecy have to do with foretelling the future. It usually has to do with the foretelling of the word of God. Serving. We may not be able to speak eloquently or sing with the angels, but each one of us can render some practical service to our fellow pilgrims on the road. There is teaching. It is more than necessary that we teach in the church. Not all of us understand the beliefs and doctrines of the church and they need to be explained. We must also remember that all of us are teachers, teaching by the words we speak and the lives we live. There is encouraging. Now, this is a hard one for a lot of us. We are so easily discouraged and we drag others down with us. Life is certainly not fair, but it is life and worth living. There is sharing or contributing. I hope that in this time of lockdown, we have spent some time in counting our blessings. And if we are blessed, is it just for our own enjoyment and pleasure? Are we not to be a blessing to others? There is leadership. We unfortunately have to be honest and admit that leadership is sorely lacking in our country. In the political sense, perhaps it is our fault. We did not want to serve to get involved. After all, everyone knows that politics is a dirty business. So we left it to others and they have taken to their hearts content. Also in the church, there's a lack of leadership. We don't want to get involved. We leave it for somebody else to do. 
There is a time when mercy has to be shown. And it must be shown with kindness. It is possible to forgive in such a way that the very forgiveness can be constituted an insult. We also say, I will forgive, but I cannot forget. We need to forgive in love. <clears throat> we have prayed the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We need to forgive in love. We need to forget. I want to end with a brief look at our gospel reading. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, but he's going via Caesarea Philippi, a very non-Jewish pagan area with many temples to the gods. There was also an enormous white marble temple to Caesar. Jesus did not take the scenic route, but the quiet road. His time was running out. He knew what awaited him in Jerusalem, and he was not sure if his disciples had grasped who he was. Jesus did not ask the question directly. He started by asking who the people said he was. And in saying that he was John the Baptist, or Elijah, or Jeremiah, the people paid him a huge compliment. John the Baptist was considered a prophet and he was revered by the people. Elijah and Jeremiah were none other than the expected forerunners of the anointed one of God. When they arrived, the kingdom would not be far behind. Against this backdrop of the pagan temple, and having heard what the people were saying, Jesus asked the important question, And you? Who do you say I am? This is a question for us, the people of Florida. It is a personal question. We are not bound by what the people say. We must discover for ourselves who Jesus is. Who is Jesus for us? A great teacher? A historical figure? Or the anointed? The Son of God? The Savior of the world? To whom we can offer our bodies as living sacrifices? Amen. Let us turn to God again in prayer. Let us pray. And our Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the challenge that we heard today. That we must offer our bodies and all that we are as sacrifice to you. Father God, we thank you for our family at Florida. And we think of those who are celebrating birthdays. And we think of those that are mourning the passing of a loved one. We pray for those who are sick, those who need encouragement, those who need upliftment, those who need a touch from you. And we pray that you will just wrap your arms of love around them. Let them know that you care, that you are with them. We can't reach out at the moment. We can't visit our loved ones as we want to. So we, we really pray for the doctors and the nurses and the helpers and the family who are close to loved ones and who can help for strength for them, for courage to walk the roads alone. 
but they're not alone because you are with them and we thank you for that father we we just pray for our church we pray for our minister we ask for a special touch on her life we pray for the churches in this circuit you know how financially stressed we are we pray for the preachers lord we pray for our church throughout the connection but we also pray for the other churches wherever your word is preached this morning we know you are there we pray a blessing on the preachers and the listeners we pray that you will raise up leaders both in the church and in the political arena that will serve the people father we know that you are always with us and as we go into this week we know that you go with us and we just thank you for that whatever is waiting for us you are already in this week because you are not constrained by the time as we are so we thank you for that we thank you for your presence with us always and lord we just commit our lives into your hands and we pray that you will help us that you will so that we can offer our our complete selves our bodies mind and spirit our work our family everything to you as living sacrifices in jesus name we pray amen and now we'll say the benediction together now may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us always now and forevermore amen go in peace and have a fantastic week thank you